I have limited time available, as we all have, and no words of mine, or indeed anybody else in this House, can undo the damage or the harm or the hurt that has been caused and continues with those people. But the actions that we take can, in fact, make some redress to them, to their children and to their children's children. And I appreciate and recommend the point made by the Taoiseach, it's contained in one of the recommendations, that we would have a monument erected containing the words of the apology that the Taoiseach uttered in May of 1999. But Taoiseach and members of this House, I suggest we should go further. We should have a living monument. We should have a monument dedicated to those people, some of whom are no longer with us, that contains their stories, their memories, our records of abuse, both clerical and state, our records of inhuman treatment, so that the walking wounded, emotional and physical, that are the people who came to the gates of this assembly yesterday, can be able to point to a permanent record of their hurt, to explain in part to their children and to their children's children why it was that they, with their stolen childhood, could not live full lives as adults. That's the first point I want to make. And that's the first point I want to make, and the second point I want to make is a bit more substantial. And I'm delighted, Tisha, that you are here, and your colleague and friend, Minister for Education and Science, Bat O'Keefe, is here as well, because I have a very serious set of allegations to make against both of you. You know, the problem with the Watergate controversy was that the burglary was, was wrong, but the cover-up was worse. And we have compounded our criticism of the religious orders and the church in this regard, and we have let free the horrendous record of the Department of Education that continues up to the present day. That continues up to the present day. We have castigated in financial terms the regulators for the failure to regulate the banks. But the Department of Education has got away scot-free in many respects and continues to get away. And I put it to you, Minister, and it is for you to refute. And it, you will know from my persistent questions that it is not for the want of trying on my part to establish facts free of prejudice. But I put it to you that there is a continued culture of deferment and obedience to the Catholic Church and its religious orders in the Department of Education that has f continually frustrated getting answers to simple questions. Simple questions. And I will give you three examples, Peter. 26th of the 2nd of this year, I asked the question, if we will enter into talks with an organization detail supplied, CORI, some of whose members as teaching orders are the legal owners of many of the primary schools, etc., etc. The answer that I got was that the, he would not, and that the information as to who owned what school of the 3,200 across the country was not readily available in a format easily accessible. That was February. On the 10th of March, three questions to the minister, and it was of the same amount. I had asked him if he will identify by name, role, number, location, the Roman Catholic diocese, each primary school, and the ownership of a religious teaching order or a Roman Catholic bishop. The reply was, there are in excess of 3,200 primary schools in this country, etc., 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 and he goes on to say, and this is the net point, members of this House, the information in relation to school site ownership and property details in would have been received by my department over a long number of years, and the legal documents relating to the interest of the state in buildings constructed on sites not in the ownership of the state are generally held in individual files as distinct from a central database. Accordingly, accordingly, the information requested by the deputy is not readily available in a format that is readily achieved. And the last question, Tisha. This is what's happening in Melbourne Street. You may spend a lot of time in Cork, but I wish you'd spend some more there. The question that I got on the 28th of May, of the same order, I name now the, 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 the 18 congregations, the ones that you met, Tisha, recently this week. And I asked them, and again, the second half of the reply, time prevents, prevents me from reading it out in full, but the records are there. These schools are privately owned, and as such, the information sought by the deputy is not readily available in a format that is readily retrievable. You don't even change the text. 
The legal documents relating to the interest of the state in buildings constructed at sites not in the ownership of the state are generally held on individual files as distinct from an individual central database. Taoiseach and Minister, either officials in your department are members of secret societies such as the Knights of Columbanus and the Opus Dei, and they have taken it upon themselves to protect the interests of these clerical orders at this point in time in this year, 2009. Or alternatively, you are politically incompetent and incapable of managing the Department of Education. To go from February to last week and say that this is not readily available, when your Taoiseach met with the same religious orders, imagine what he could have said. Imagine what the power would have been for you, Taoiseach, if you could have said to the 18 orders, listen, you, the Christian Brothers, have 97 t uh, schools, built for mostly by the taxpayer through voluntary contributions or through grants. You, the Sisters of Mercy, and so on and so on, together have schools somewhere of the order, I guess, because these guys won't tell me. You're refusing to tell me. But you have schools of the order of perhaps three, four hundred. The legal ownership of those schools should be transferred without any contribution. And in return, the schools should continue as schools and for the time being under the existing patronship arrangements until such time as we democratically and collectively decide how best to do it. We are the only country in Europe, the only country in Europe, including countries like Catholic Spain and Catholic Italy and Catholic Austria, where the primary school system is controlled by private organizations. And if you think they're not private, look at the court decision in relation to Louise O'Keefe and how, in fact, at the end of the day, the state was not responsible for the abuse that she received from a primary school teacher, not a religious person, but that it was the boards of management and the private organizations. We have to deal with this problem, and this is the way we start. You were looking, Taoiseach, and you asked him to come back in two weeks uh, with an inventory of their assets. The man sitting beside you knows what they are and he's refusing to tell me, a deputy of this House. Now, I don't believe you're a bad man, Minister O'Keefe, and I don't believe you're a Catholic right-wing secret obscurantist. But I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this, many of the people working for you on a permanent salary, because you'll be gone in a couple of years, most certainly are, or else they're incompetent, lazy and destructive. You can take your choice as to what the explanation is, but I've given you the facts. You are, and your department are, concealing from us, the, the citizens of this republic, the nature and the ownership and the scale. And I'm not able to go into it, but one of the replies you gave to me was simply a lie. It suggested, for example, that there were legal protocols in, in, in existence that prevented schools from being sold off. That is not the case for the vast majority of those schools. Many of them have built up areas which were built before 1960 when such protocols came into existence. So in conclusion, I would say this, teacher. Build the monument. Make it a living, lasting voice of what we did. This was not some era of colonial exploitation. This was not the Anglo-Saxon invasion of this country. This is what we did to ourselves for the reasons that Deputy Gilmore has stated. Not just the monument, but a living museum, a permanent reminder that never again can it happen, and an explanation for those who were affected and their families as to why they were, they were the way they were. But on the second point, what we learn for the future. We need to take these schools. We need to take our entire primary school infrastructure into public ownership. We are paying for them. We are funding them. We need to get the kind of management controls that are necessary to bring us into line with every other European country. Every other European country. We need to do this. You have a golden opportunity. The value of 500 schools at two, three million a, a pot each is close to a, a, a billion. It will go a long way in the eyes of the public. It will go a long way to saying we are sorry for what happened and for our consistent denial and refusal to recognize our responsibility. And it would ensure that whoever is Minister for Education in the future has a rational control of the infrastructure so as to get the best productivity from that infrastructure. They're the two points I want to make. But I would say in conclusion, Minister O'Keefe, you have a serious responsibility to either manage that department modernly and effectively or to root out 
the obstruction that is manifestly evident in the consistent replies that I've been getting from you over the last year.